OK, next up we have um, Cassia and apologies if I butcher the surname um, Senizen from the University of Kent. And Cassia is going to talk to us today about what can the public sector learn from the creative arts about delivering accessible events? So firstly, um, hi, Cassia, it's nice to see you and apologies if I got the surname wrong there. <laughs> no, that was very well done. I'm sorry, I don't have a very accessible surname, do I? <laughs> um, <laughs> very few vowels in there. Um, yes, I'm, I'm Cassia. Thank you for uh, inviting me to speak today. Um, I'm a, a white female in my mid 30s and I've got very short um, sort of wavy hair um, and I'm wearing a, a navy shirt with lots of flowers on. So um, why on earth am I talking to you today? So I, uh, I did three years of a PhD um, on making theatre more accessible for people with hearing or sight loss. Um, and during that time, I got to speak to a lot of theatres about what they're doing um, and you know what their challenges are and what they are hoping to do in the future. Um, and as Marion just said, access has changed uh, exponentially in the last few years. So um, I just wanted to give you a bit of a picture about what uh, theatres have been doing and how we might learn some lessons. So I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, so hopefully you're seeing what I'm seeing. Just give me a little nod there, Phil, if, if you can see that. Yep, that's perfect. OK, fantastic. So um, to get started then. So first of all, I wanted to talk to you about the, the customer journey in general, because I think uh, a lot of the times the theatres were focusing on, on the end bit, the product, how to make the performance um, accessible and not really thinking about the rest of the interactions that the customer was having. So uh, here I've got uh, sort of the different parts of the, the customer journey, the marketing and information. So how are they hearing about that performance? Then how are they booking it? How are they arriving at the venue? How accessible is the venue itself? And then the product. So if they're not hearing about it, then they're not going to this really amazing accessible show. So that's something that I think uh, we could all learn from as well. Um, so just to give you a bit of context, there are 11 million people um, in the UK that have hearing loss and 2 million uh, people in the UK have sight loss. So that's a huge audience that's potentially missing out um, on your on your performance, your product, your event, whatever it is. Um, and, uh, you know, again, combined kind of uh, spending power, the purple pound, which is the spending power of disabled people in the UK, um, is about 17.1 billion pounds. So, again, there's a, a massive amount of um, of potential resources um, in the arts industry, for example, uh, that could very much use that, that, that especially at the moment, um, that, that sort of income that we're not getting. Um, and a big part of it is that these questions are not being answered. Um, at point of, of creation. So how is how is this heard? How is this marketing heard? How is it seen? And how is it understood? So that's what I wanted to sort of uh, talk through today. Um, so some of the stuff that uh, some of the best practice that I picked up on when I was doing my research and talking to theatres, um, a lot of it about the behind the scenes. You know, people like to know about behind the scenes. People look at interviews with actors, for example. They like to get to know about the people, about the, 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 the you know, what's going on in the process. So and that actually is a really good accessible tool as well, because um, you get to know the actors, the costumes, the set, the story, you know, even knowing that it's set in the 19th century in London, um, you know, things like that will help a blind or visually impaired person sort of picture the set and get a sense of uh, of what the costumes might look like. Um, you know, so having um, having the actors uh, do a quick kind of uh, video on Facebook, for example, just to say uh, that they're really excited to be in the show and what their character's like. And um, just something like that is is really uh, great to to get them immersed in it, but also to to provide access. And also they start to hear the actors' voices, and that's really good for being able to hear them moving around the stage. Uh, touch tours and pre-visits, um, introduction clips and things like that, all really, really helpful, again, to get just get the, generate interest in the performance, not just providing access, because really providing access is just about developing um, customer experience, which is beneficial for everyone. Just a, a reminder that PDFs and text on images are not necessarily your friends. So make sure that you're putting alternative text, alt text on images. Um, and PDFs often are not read well by uh, screen readers because uh, they can sometimes come up as an image. So you might want to consider having a Word document uh, available as well because that, that's much more screen reader friendly. Although some PDF software does, does do that, so just double check. Um, using QR codes, I know that, that people find uh, QR codes a bit tricky, but for um, a deaf person, a QR code that links to a BSL version 
um, of the leaflet or a BSL version of the descriptions or the summary or something like that can be a really handy way of doing things. And deaf people are, are getting very used to using things on their phone and having lots of um, accessible things on their phone. So QR codes are a really good way of doing that. Um, and then, of course, the, the obvious, obvious one, having captions on videos. Um, not, again, not just for um, hearing uh, loss or, or people who are deaf, but 25% of us use captions all of the time, just, just scrolling through. Um, so having captions on, on videos is, again, not just about access now. It's about uh, a customer experience as well. Audio flyers are a really good way uh, of getting your message out and getting your marketing out, um, you know, through... Uh, just using your voice and again can be done really cheaply you literally can just do it on your iPhone just record the information that's on the leaflet and put that recording on your website or social media it's super simple and um, putting contact information so not just putting here's the website but who do I contact who do I speak to if I have an access um, you know need or requirement and what are the clear next steps how do I book who do I contact what what you know what, what do I need to know about the venue um, making that act, the venue access information clear, you know, is there disabled parking? Who do they speak to? Where do they get their tickets from? That kind of thing. And using plain English in all marketing and communication. Again, really good for anyone, not just people who have access requirements. People whose English is their, not their first language or people who are neurodiverse and maybe struggle with um, English. Um, and really, really important with, with your hashtags please use camel case. That means capitalising each word. Um, you may have heard about the Susan Boyle fiasco um, when the, her Twitter team put up this hashtag, Susan's album party, which came up as Sue's anal bum party, if you don't capitalise each word. So you have to be really careful um, how you use your hashtags. Um, but if you capitalise each one, this is much easier to read and much safer so that you don't have that problem. Booking processes, um, again, uh, something that people often forget. Um, so where is, who's the access contact, the information that they might need to? Be careful a little bit with recapture. They don't always offer an audio option. So just make sure that you're, you're in, including the audio option for any of the kind of you know, payment verification softwares and things like that. Um, offering Facebook or WhatsApp messaging services can be really helpful for uh, deaf people, for example, who uh, can't phone up the box office to find out about the times or find out how to um, you know, use things. Um, so make sure that you're offering alternative methods of communication. It's not just one way to get in touch. Do you have access seats or uh, companion seats? Do you offer discounts? Do you offer um, you know, additional kind of um, materials for people? Make sure that that is available to everyone and that you're speaking about it when people are making bookings uh, because they might not know to ask. Um, again, something that's really easy to do and free, um, taking some pictures of, of the venue and making them available to people who are booking. Um, there's a really great website called Rate My Seat uh, where you can find like images of theatre seats and there's an image on the right hand side of the screen there of a, of a theatre and of a view from a particular seat. Again, not just for access. Who doesn't want to know like, can I, am I going to get blocked? Am I spending 90 quid for nothing? I'm not going to be able to see anything from there. Um, you know, that's that's a great sort of customer experience thing anyway, not just for access. And offering a variety of um, options in terms of picking up your tickets by a post, digital, digital, picking it up in the box office, um, you know, uh, putting stuff on your phone, whatever it is, um, anything like that is, is, again, really beneficial for everyone, not just for, for people who have an access need. So arriving at the venue, um, something that, again, that gets missed is you arrive, um, you know, in, in the car park. How do you get to the box office? Do you go left out of the car park? Do you go right? You know, signage is really, really important. So um, signposting the the um, entrance from the car park, where to get your tickets, um, where in the venue they need to go to get their seats, um, where are the toilets? Maybe having a visible guide, having somebody at the entrance ready to receive people as you start your event um, and take them to, to, the, to the space that they need to be in. Um, something I saw um, in, in a theatre space which I thought was excellent was something called a tactile box set. So if you have ever worked in theatre you might know that set designers create a bit of a, um, a scaled down version of the set in, in, a, in what's called a box set um, just to, to show, show the actors and the director what the set's going to look like during rehearsal. And I've seen that be used. It's already created so it's not cost them anything else. 
um, it's already been created and they put that in reset in the sort of box office area so that blind and visually impaired people can pick it up bits of the set and get a sense of okay so there's a living room space and then that goes through to the kitchen and the kitchen has a table and then there are chairs around it you can get all of things like that um, and again they're, they're a brilliant way of introducing anyone to the set um, and of course having information um, available in different formats so maybe large print or braille um, a bsl version of, of key information easy read um you know guides and things like that um and visual stories if you don't know what a visual story is uh, this is predominantly used for people with autism or, or neurodiverse conditions and it's basically a kind of um visual um introduction to different elements of the production so it could be um about the the show about the company uh, a scene by scene breakdown um, of what's happening and what to expect um but even could do thing you know go talk about theater going to the theatre in general. So what is an usher and what's a box office and um, you know where, where, do, where the toilets are and everything like that. So a really easy guide to, to follow. And of course, coming up to the final bit of that process, the, the product itself. Um, generally, what I was seeing in my research with the, were four kind of pillars of access that were being used. Captions, also known as subtitles, British Sign Language Interpretation, audio description, and relaxed performances and so um, most of the performances um, that were made accessible would sit within one of these and some of the more interesting productions I saw were when these were embedded so rather than added on at a later stage where you had a British Sign Language interpreter at the side of the stage uh, frantically trying to keep up with the script for example um, actually having uh, a deaf actor or a interpreter embedded into the cast in costume um, which stops what we, what we, we know is the, the Wimbledon effect where you're looking at the, the show then you're looking at the interpreter then you're looking at the show then you're looking at the interpreter and you tend to miss things um, having them embedded and walking around the stage as an actor um, is, is much more immersive um, I've got about a minute left Cassia okay well this is my my final uh, oh no it's not I've got one more slide um so yeah so basically there's there's lots of things that we can learn about embedding these um these things into into the performance um and you know making it much more immersive so just some of the lessons that we could learn then from these uh, consider the whole journey of uh, the student the attendee the the, the participant um you know the, the customer um, and think about how is it heard how is it seen and how is it understand and consider how those four pillars of access could be used to your benefit provide the information but let them decide on whether it's accessible to them you know that they will decide whether this is going to work for them just give them the information and then try review and try again get feedback and, and continue to improve um, you know access is an iterative process uh, don't assume what people's needs are ask them because um, after all what we're aiming for is actually equity rather than equality we don't want everyone to have the same thing we want everyone to have the same access to the thing um, so that means you know reducing barriers and providing um, access that in the ways that are, are helpful to them so hopefully that's that's given you a bit an overview of what what's going on in the theatre world um, at the moment um, feel free to ask me any questions and apologies if I've rambled on a little bit you haven't rambled on at all that was brilliant thank you um, one question I have, if that's OK, Cassia, just before we go for a break, is that I think something that we hear quite a lot is that creating accessible content is actually it costs loads and therefore it's unfeasible in many cases. I wonder if you like, could share any of your thoughts on that. Yeah, sure. So, um, yes, sometimes access can be expensive because things like British Sign Language interpretation, for example, you can't sort of you know create a grassroots version of that really um, you have to get a professional in and that does cost but there's lots of things that you can do um, you know I, I mentioned about doing an audio flyer that you can literally record on your own iPhone um, and stick the recording up somewhere um, you know you can do lots of things I took a show to Edinburgh um, where we had uh, captions in every performance we embedded audio description elements in the show we had a soundscape so we had um, a, a musician creating um, sort of not music but sound that kind of um, made it more uh, audio description friendly as in you know the the, the sighted people had their lights to, to determine what kind of uh, mood was happening and how the how the mood was changing um, and we used the sound to kind of replicate that um, and the only thing it cost me in terms of access was 50 pounds to hire the projector 
Um, so the rest of it was just well thought out, embedded within it. We had a pre-show audio description introduction where I literally stood in reception and asked if anybody wanted me to read out an introduction to them. Um, we'd worked with a theatre company um, who's uh, very good at uh, audio description called Fingersmiths um, to, to embed audio description elements. We changed the script. We worked with the author of the script to, to change the script. So we had a, a moment where there was a, um, a, an altercation, a physical altercation. Um, and we added in things like get off me and don't touch her and things like that that weren't in the script so that somebody who was sight impaired could could hear what was going on across the stage. So there are definitely ways that you can embed things and think about things without it costing you a fortune.